Hello, everyone. I'm Rong Wang from Singapore Membrane Technology Center, Nanyang Technological University, Singapore. It's my great pleasure to be here today with all of you participating in the UK and the Singapore Water webinar. Before I start, I would like to thank Dr. Idea and Joanne from SG Men for the invitation. In this talk, I would like to share with you our work on developing novel biomimetic reverse osmosis hollow fiber membranes for water reuse and desalination. We start from lab study and move to commercialization. As we know, water scarcity is a global challenge. In the past 20 years, there have been tremendous growth in constructing desalination plan for sustainable water supply worldwide. For seawater desalination, Reverse osmosis membrane technology is a dominant technology in the market as compared with the thermal-based uh, desalination technology. Currently in Singapore, desalinated water can meet up to 25% of Singapore's current water demand. On the other hand, people also make efforts to reclaim used water in Singapore we call new water production. In the new water production process, you can see black water reverse osmosis membrane filtration is a critical step to ensure the high quality of new water produce. Currently in Singapore, new water can meet up to 40% of nation national wide water needs. From here, you can see reverse osmosis membrane technology is very important for water production. What is reverse osmosis? From here, you can see uh, reverse osmosis actually is a pressure driven membrane process. We apply external hydraulic pressure to overcome the osmotic pressure of the feed stream and the overcome membrane resistance to push the water from a high sub concentration feed site to the low concentration permeate site. Compared to other type of the pressure driven membrane process like microfiltration, ultrafiltration, nanofiltration, reverse osmosis has the most tightened pore structure. It rejects all the salts, just only allowed water to, uh, to transportation. So the RO membranes have the lowest water permeability and have the highest operating pressure. In the RO technology, the center of the RO technology are the thin film composite RO membranes. From this chart, we can see this is the thin film composite RO membranes looks like. They are porous support. On the top is a poly-MY active layer. This layer will do the separation job. It will only have around 200 nanometer uh, in thickness. How to form this polyamide layer? Actually, we through the interfacial polymerization using two type of monomers, MPD, TMC, to have a faster interaction, to uh, have a chemical reaction to form this polyamide uh, active layer. Same film R or composite RO membrane is the state of art technology for water reuse and seawater desalination. However, the further exploitation of this technology is limited by the low water permeability and the high specific energy consumption required that multiplies to high unit cost for, pro for water produced. So increasing R&D effort in the past 10 years has been made. From this chart, you can see the publication numbers and the, uh, the invention patterns increase over the years. One of the efforts is to make the biomimetic RO membranes by utilizing aquipolyne natural water channel proteins or synthetic water channel compounds to be incorporated into the selective layer to significantly enhance the water transportation. Another approach is to use various types of fillers 
and then use this failure to tailor the structure of the polymer matrix in the selective layer to enhance the water transportation. We work in this area, starting in 2009, 12 years already passed. In 2009, we get the first project to give up the aquiporine based biomimetic membranes. Then continuously, we work on this topic over the past 12 years, received the grant from the government funding agency. We work on the aquiporine based membranes. We also work on the synthetic channel based membranes. From the laboratory study, from the application, now we are working on the scale up the fabrication of this aquiporine based and the synthetic channel based uh, biomimetic membranes. In addition, we have a new invention to develop the new type of the biomimetic RO membranes without the aquiporine. We use a special type of the biomolecules to incorporate into the synthetic simplium, and these biomolecules will affect, will adjust the, uh, the selective layers porous structure, uh, the uh, polyamide structure to make it highly permeable. Because of uh, free of the aquiporine, the fabrication process much simpler and cheaper and much faster. And uh, we use these biomolecules to tailor the structure of the selective layer. So we call it this type of the membranes as a bioprogrammable membranes. The performance in terms of water permeability can be doubled compared with the commercial membrane. You may wonder how this bioprogrammable membranes work. We have done some fundamental study. We try to understand the mechanism behind. From this morphology, you can see that uh, the the first line is the control membrane, TFC membrane without the biomolecules. We can see the top layer, the polyamide layer have these leaves. These leaves actually are the surface area for water transport. But after we incorporate biomolecules into the uh, synthetic symphion, the, the polyamide layer, you can see there are many leaves occur in the top layer. This means a lot of the surface area occur in this uh, bioprogrammable membranes for water transportation. The surface area is around three times than the control membrane. That we believe is the reason to enhance the water permeation. Another unique feature of our, uh, of our RO membrane is in hollow fiber configuration. We know Conventional RO spiral uh, RO membranes is in spiral wound membrane module configuration. We need to use the spacer in the permeate side, in the field side to, uh, to guide the flow and the, uh, the module structure is quite complicated as compared with the hollow fiber membrane module. Hollow fiber membrane module very straightforward, a bundle of the fiber and the housing by the, by the shell. So hollow fiber membrane module have a better flow pattern and it has a more even pressure distribution. Most importantly, because of a simple flow channel, the membrane falling can be reduced and can be easily cleaned. That's very important for practical operation. We are very excited with this invention, but we know another key aspect is about the scaling up and the translation of the discovery so they can be put in the practical operation. Um, we started from the very small piece of the membrane module, the lab testing module. Then we make the into the two inch diameter, half meter long. Then we make the four inch membrane module one meter long. Finally, we reach eight inch module one meter long in this size. For your information, for eight inch module, it contain 12,800 pieces of the fibers inside this member module. And uh, we raise up the technology readiness level, prepare, push the technology out of the lab for commercialization. So we build commercial level spinning line. We build the automatic membrane coating machine uh, for the surface coating. We also have the testing uh, system for big member modules. Here, I show you two videos. Uh, you will see 
how we make the hollow fiber membranes and the, how we use the machine to do the surface coating. From the left hand the video, you can see, we can produce uh, a piece of the fibers out of the spinner simultaneously to make the uh, porous substrate. Then we use this machine, automatic machine to do the surface coating to form the top selective layer on the substrate. Now, I'd like to share with you the membrane performance. Uh, on the left-hand side are the 4040 type of the membrane module, that's a four-inch module. And the right-hand side is the A040, that's a uh, eight-inch commercial membrane size, you can see. The water permeability, all bigger, higher than five LMH per bar, with sodium chloride rejection over 96%. That's our project target. For your information, currently in the market, you can find brackish water RO membranes with water permeability around the two to three LMH per bar with a similar level of the salt injection. So our membrane performance in terms of water permeability doubled. Okay, we also do the long-term benchmark with commercial membranes. Uh, we do the testing in parallel uh, for the, uh, our own membranes and the two commercial membranes. We collect the real new water from the local new water plant to do the testing. To achieve the same water flux 20 LMH, our membranes only need to run three to four bar pressure and the commercial membranes need to run five to six bar or six to seven bar. The water quality, the rejection is similar. You can see here. And uh, we also have a unit running currently at the QB water plant at the Bulu Pandan, the new uh, water reclamation plant at a capacity 14 cubic meter per day. That's a continued testing to test our membranes by a programmable membranes without aquicoli and uh, with aquicoli in the first uh, 120 days. Then we mount, we, inst uh, we uh, install the commercial two commercial membranes continue to do the testing. So you can see two commercial membranes need much higher transmembrane pressure for the operation to achieve the same water flux. And uh, this bottom part is our bioprogrammable membranes performance operating pressure needed for the flux. In addition, we also calculate the energy consumption for our pilot testing system and the compare, compare the number with the current PUB operation on site. Because our system only needs a 4.5 bar operating pressure, we can save our pumping energy by 50% compared to the current practice in the new water plant. Here, I'm pleased to let you know that we are ready to push the technology out of the laboratory. We have licensed our technology to a Singapore local company for by a programmable RO hollow fiber membranes commercialization. With this, I would like to make a conclusion. The growth of membrane technology is assured due to impending water scarcity. We have successfully developed the novel our hollow fiber membranes for water reuse and the desalination with the superior uh, water perform, uh, permeation. I believe it is important to improve technology readiness level from the laboratory study and uh, prepare for technology translation. As a membrane scientist, I believe the commercialization of advanced membrane technology will be the ultimate goal of membrane research. With this, I would like to thank all my collaborators, research staff, and the PhD students who worked with me in the past 12 years. This is really a long journey. I would also like to thank the funding agency, uh, NRF, PUB, MND, for continuous funding uh, provided to us. Finally, I'd like to thank Sing uh, Singapore Economic Development Board for funding Singapore Membrane Technology Center at the New Reads NGU. I would also like to thank you for your listening. I'm looking forward to the potential collaboration with all of you. Thank you. I'm more than happy to answer your question.
Thank you. Thanks very much for an, for an excellent presentation. Just going through the, the questions now. Um, if anyone has any uh, additional questions, please enter them in the, the Q&A box with the name of the speaker ahead of it, so I know who is which questions are for who. So we've had one question come in, Professor, um, where mm -hmm. it was, could you summarise the relative costs and performance of the, the product just in, in terms of the commercialisation that you were speaking about at the end there? Uh, sorry again. So you want to know the uh, the membrane performance? That one, the membrane will push for the commercialization. That's the question. Sorry. Yeah. So so if you were to commercialize this, what, what would its kind of relative cost and and performance be? So if you're a, a water company looking at implementing this, how much would it would it cost and and okay. what would it perform? Thank you. Okay. Yeah. For commercialization, actually, a lot of the parameters we need to consider. Not only just simple testing in the laboratory. Actually, we have already tested our membranes in the laboratory for the long-term testing, uh, the over half year. Now, the current testing in the on-site on the new water plant already lasts a half year. The testing is continued. Basically, our membrane water permeability double as compared with the commercial membranes. Uh, it means to produce the same amount of the water, we only need half of the operating pressure. And uh, the stability, long-term stability, stability is a concern. We are still running our membrane system. And uh, currently is 14 cubic meter per day, the pilot testing. Now we are building 100 cubic meter per day, the pilot testing. That uh, currently we are doing the construction. That will be done within uh, like the four to six months of the time after we build the system. So we will continue to run the big pilot to confirm the, uh, the practical applicability of our membranes. Thank <music> you.